Hey guys, happy Wednesday. This is the analysis of Apple computer financial statements. This is a way that I can illustrate the content and concepts of chapter 13. So we're going to look at the financial statements of Apple computer and do a bunch of calculations. So this particular spreadsheet or workbook, I should say, is an Excel wor workbook that is entitled Apple Analysis Worksheets. I have posted this on Canvas along with a PDF version. You can either do this and follow along in Excel if you have Excel and are familiar with how it works, or you can just follow along and use a pencil the worksheets uh, that I that I give you um, that are PDF. So before we start on this, I wanted to point out where I got the information for the Apple financial statements. Here is the income statement. It's somewhat summarized. And I provided some other information down below here. And then here is the balance sheet. These have been prepared in a vertical analysis. Vertical analysis is part of the concepts of the chapter, and I've done this for the income statement and the balance sheet for Apple for the three years of 2017, 2018, and 2019. I've also given you a worksheet, which is what I will be using. I am going to do 2018 for you to follow and then you can put in 2019 on your own and I provided check figures that give you the answers to each one of these um, financial ratios. So uh, before we get started let's go over to Yahoo Finance and take a peek at Apple. So here is Yahoo Finance. I've brought up Apple. Um, today it's down just a tiny bit, but obviously Apple has done really well. And by the way, um, I looked up Apple. Here is AAPL is their stock symbol. And on this summary page is some of the information or ratios that we will be calculating today including the P.E. ratio and earnings per share. However, the information we're going to use is as of particular year-end financial statements, and this is the current as of today, which is the 27th of May. So if I click on financials, and we have the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement, they don't put the statement of retained earnings or the statement of stockholders equity on Yahoo Finance, but you can find that on the company's 10K or in their annual report. Anyway, this information is what I have put into the spreadsheet for you, so you don't need to worry about it. I'm just pointing out where we where I got it. So the, the revenue for Apple for last fiscal year, which was September 30th, 2019, was $260 billion. That's a lot of money. So let's get started. Oh, uh, before I do that, here's the balance sheet. Now the balance sheet, we have to actually click the little arrows to, to open it up. Uh, so here's the current assets for 2019, 162, 819 billion. And then uh, the liabilities are down here and current liability. So if you look at the spreadsheet, then you will see these numbers. Okay, so I'm going to go through this rather quickly, just so this video doesn't end up being really, really long. But uh, but you can stop it whenever you want and, uh, and then do the calculations and continue on. So we'll start with, two, we're going to do just 2018. The current ratio, we have 131.339 is the current assets, 116.866, which is the current 
liabilities. So if we divide those, we get 1.2. 1.12 is okay. Anything over one is okay. Anything over one and a half is good. Anything over two is very good. This is a measurement of liquidity. And then if we take those same numbers and subtract current liabilities from current assets, we get working capital. Working capital means that the this is the amount of money available for the company to be able to pay their bills. In other words, current assets are assets that are going to be converted to cash or liquidated within one year, and current liabilities are assets or liabilities that must be paid within one year. Okay, so continuing on down, we're going to get to the quick ratio, which is a more uh, focused ratio on just cash, short-term investments. Short-term investments is money, uh, maybe it could be stocks, but it's mostly going to be short-term uh, money market accounts or other really, really short-term investments that don't fluctuate a lot that the company is holding just to make a little bit of interest, but they're, they're not uh, locking in for long term. And then accounts receivable 48995 is uh, accounts receivable for Apple. And of course, uh, that $48 billion, $49 billion is mostly from Walmart and Costco and other places that sell Apple products and most places sell Apple products. Um, because I don't think consumers can actually uh, finance directly through Apple. So their accounts receivable are to other big companies, retailers, big box retailers that sell Apple products. Um, Verizon, wireless, um, all of the, the phone guys. Then we're going to use the same uh, current liabilities of 116, 866, so for this year, the quick ratio is a little less than one. It, well, it's 0.99. It is uh, still very, very good. Um, obviously, Apple has a lot of cash and short-term investments that uh, will mean they're not going to have any trouble paying their bills. The accounts receivable turnover is next. This is comparing something on the balance sheet with something on the income statement. Sales, 265, 595. And then we're going to calculate the average accounts receivable. So accounts receivable at the beginning of the year, which is going to come from the previous year's balance sheet, is 35,673. 48,995 is accounts receivable for this year. If I take those two numbers, and add them together and divide by 2, I'll get the average, which is 42,334. I'll bring that average down uh, to the top. And if I take sales and divide it by the average accounts receivable, I get an accounts receivable turnover of 6.3. What does this mean? It means that accounts receivable turns over, gets collected, sold, collected, sold six times during the year, which means their average collection period is going to be somewhere around 60 days because that's two months, which is, which is uh, going to be six times a year. Calculation number five is very similar. This is days sales uncollected. So in this case, we're taking the ending accounts receivable, which is still 48,995. It's the third time we've used that. We're going to take net sales, which we already have up above, 265,595. There's 365 days in a year, which means that daily sales, if we take the annual sales and divide it by 365, means that Apple sells $728 million every single day. 
And if we divide accounts receivable by that daily sales, we get 67 days. We saw up here that the 6.3 was about 60 days, maybe a little bit longer. And here is the calculation of 67 days. Now, keep in mind that the day's sales uncollected is uses the ending accounts receivable as opposed to accounts receivable turnover, which uses the average. So that's why these are not exactly the same, but they're very similar calculations. And we can do the same thing with inventory. Inventory uh, with, with, the, with the accounts receivable, we're comparing sales and accounts receivable. Here, we're comparing cost of goods sold with merchandise inventory. So cost of goods sold for 2018, 163, 756. Average inventory, we're gonna calculate it down here. Beginning inventory was 4855. Ending inventory was 3956. So our average, again, I'm gonna add them together and divide by two to get the average. And if we bring that into our calculation up above, we get the inventory turnover of 37.2, 37.2. So you can see that Apple's inventory turns over very quickly. They don't hold much inventory. So they're, they're selling $163 billion worth of, of uh, merchandise. That's not the selling price, that's their cost. And then, uh, so you can see it's turning over very, very quickly. So when we do the day sales and ending inventory, if we take inventory of 3956, that's the ending inventory. Cost of goods sold is still the 163,756. We got 365 days in a year, so they're daily cost of goods sold. In other words, the cost of the merchandise that they sell every day is $449 million. And if we divide that into the inventory, we get 8.8. .8. So what this means is that Apple is selling out their inventory completely every nine days. They're selling 450 million a day. They've got 4 million in stock roughly. So that means they're selling every, everything out every nine days on the average. Okay, again, as with the, the, the accounts receivable calculations, uh, the inventory turnover uses the average inventory and day sales in ending inventory uses the ending inventory. Moving on, asset turnover. The asset turnover is gonna tell us how quickly they're turning over all of their assets. So if we take 265 as the sales, And then we calculate average total assets, 375, 319, 365, 725. Again, I'm going to add them together and divide by two. That gives us an average of 370, 522. And if we take net sales divided by average total assets, we get an asset turnover of 0.72. That honestly is not a very efficient number for Apple. I'm surprised it's as low as it is, but it is what it is. So in other words, they're selling less than their average total assets. 
uh, companies like Costco and Walmart, this number is going to be much higher. It'll be more like two or three. Costco is very high. Asset turnover. Now we'll do the debt ratio. The debt ratio is the ratio between total liabilities and total assets. Total liabilities for Apple in 18 was 258,578, and total assets 365,725. So the debt ratio is 0.71. Point seven one when you compare debt to total assets. Then the equity ratio and these three debt ratio, equity ratio, and debt to equity ratio are very similar. They're using the three components of the balance sheet, liabilities, assets, and equity. So the equity ratio, if we take total equity, 107, 147, and 365, 725, same assets as we had before, and divide that out. It should be the reciprocal. So the 0.71 and 0.29 should equal zero. So the debt to equity, the debt ratio and the equity ratio together should equal one. And then the last of these. Three is the debt to equity ratio where we're taking total liabilities and total equity and showing the rate relationship between the total amount of debt the company has and the total amount of equity they have. And so for Apple, that's 2.41. Very strong. And their balance sheet is very strong. But they're Apple, and that's uh, that's good. So most banks, particularly with small businesses that are looking to borrow money, don't like to see this debt to equity ratio be above four. Depends on the business, but for the most part, um, they banks that loan money to companies want this to be less than four. Well, obviously, Apple is way less than four. Apple is not going to have any trouble borrowing money uh, because they're Apple. Okay, moving on to the net income percentage. Net income, 59,531. Net sales, 265,595. This is a relationship of their bottom line. And we will put that as a percentage. In other words, Apple is making 22 cents on every dollar of sales in net, in net income. That's huge. 22.4% is very high for a company like Apple, particularly with the volume that they do. But when we do gross profit, it'll even be more impressive because Apple has gross profit of $101 billion on sales of 265,595. So their gross profit percentage is a whopping 38.3%. So uh, when you buy an iPhone for $1,000, it's costing them about uh, $383 to make it. I'm surprised it's that high, to be honest, but, uh, but that's what it is. So Apple's gross profit is very, very strong, which is why they're making a lot of money. Okay, next we're going to do return on total assets and return on common stockholders equity where we compare net income 59,531 and average total assets. We already calculated that up above. And so I'm just going to link to it. We calculated it in our asset turnover, which is up here. Where is it? There it is. And so here's our average total assets. We already calculated it once. We don't need to calculate it again. And so when we take the relationship of net income to average total assets, 
we get 16.1%. Again, very strong for Apple because uh, they're a very strong company. Return on common stockholders' equity. We're going to need to calculate average stockholders' equity. Our net income is still the 59 531. And then we're going to take the beginning equity, which is 134,047, and ending equ equity, which is 107,147. Again, add them together. I've got to use parentheses always when I do this because we want to add, before we divide by 2, 120,597. So we'll uh, link that in up above here. And if we take net income divided by average stockholders' equity, Apple is returning a whopping 49.4% on their common stockholders' equity, the average. Again, very, very strong. Uh, one of the reasons why I pick Apple to do this exercise is because of how strong their numbers are. Uh, it's a very profitable company. This is going to show that. Book value for, per common share. If we take the common equity, which we have above as 107, this is at the end of the year. Uh-oh, I screwed up. Let's try that again. Common equity is 107,147. The number of shares outstanding, 4755 which is 4,755,000,000, which means that our book value is 22.53. Book value per common share um, tells us of the book value. Now, one of the interesting things is about book value, if you calculate that and it's more than the current price, and we saw the price of Apple is way over $300 a share, so the book value at $22 a share is minuscule compared to what the, what the stock is selling for, but um, in some cases, the book value for companies that have been beaten down, the book value could be higher than the, the market value, and uh, that's when you know it, that either the company is really dwindling on bankruptcy or, uh, or they're a bargain. Then, earnings per share. If we take the total number of earnings, the total net income, again, 59,531, we've used this before. The number of shares outstanding is still 4,755. We get the earnings per share by dividing the number of shares by the uh, number of shares that are outstanding. $12.52 is very close to what was reported on that Yahoo Finance, even though uh, that is at a different date, but Apple is a very stable company. So $12.52 is their, um, is their uh, earnings per share. In other words, how, many, how much are they earning for every share of stock? So price earnings ratio is going to take the market price and compare it to the earnings per share. So at that date, which was at the end of September in 2018, Apple was selling for a dollar, $165 a share. Their earnings per share is the $12.52. So if we take the market price per share divided by the earnings per share, we get the P.E. ratio of 13.2, 13.2. Um, at that point in time, Apple's stock was very underpriced. Right now, their P.E. ratio is probably, well, we just looked at it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bring that up in a minute and we'll see what it is today, but it's probably way over 20. It's probably more like 25 or 26. But that is probably the single most important measurement that stock investors use to, uh, to determine if a, if a company's stock is overvalued or not. And then, so our last calculation is the dividend yield. 
And with dividend yield, we need to first calculate the cash dividends per share. And the cash dividends paid in 2018 is 13,735. So if I take that 13,735, which is the total dividends paid, and divide it by the number of shares outstanding, which we have up above, I'm going to get $2.89. So they're paying $2.89 per share in cash dividends. The market price is the 165 we used before. So the dividend yield is the cash dividends per share divided by the market price, which is 1.75%. So if we go back here to Yahoo Finance and look at Apple, you can see that the P-E ratio is close to 25. They're still earning about the same number of earnings per share, $12.73 a share. The dividend yield has dropped down a little bit from what we just calculated. Uh, but then, you know, the stock price is uh, up way over $300 a share, although it's down a little bit today. Um, so that gives you an overview of how we apply these ratios for chapter 13. That's it for this particular lesson. Spend some time and calculate the numbers for 2019. I provided check figures on the, sp on the spreadsheet and on the, the handout. And I'll see you again next time.